All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be showing you a full cheat sheet on exactly how a day trade SPY options. So not only am I gonna be showing you the main strategy I use to day trade SPY options, but I'm also gonna be showing you the exact trades I took today, how much money I made, exactly where I entered, where I exited, all the stuff you need to know to properly day trade SPY options. So hopefully you get some value and some education from this video. Okay, so today is Thursday, February 2nd, and I ended up making around $500 $85 today. So not my biggest day, but what I did well today was I followed my plan. Remember, you're not going to win every trade. You're not going to make a huge amount of money on every trade. Sometimes you're going to get stopped out on your runners, right? And that's okay. The most important thing with trading is you actually follow your plan, whether you're red, green, you have a somewhat good day, a somewhat bad day, right? That's the most important thing. So anyways, let's actually go into the charts and show you um, kind of what I was looking at. So like I said, for the SPY trading cheat sheet, so I day trade options for the SPY market. And you know, the majority of my trades, I'm looking for supply and demand. Now, the reason why I like supply and demand is because this is how big institutions trade, right? You don't want to trade like the typical retail trader because retail, 90% of them lose money, okay? And with institutions, 90% of them make money, right? And then only 10% of them lose money. So it's completely flipped, okay? So you want to think like an institution. You want to think like, you know, the big money, right? Not the little money. So what we're going to do is we always want to zoom out into the bigger time frames look at your identify your key levels and then you can go intraday to actually take your trades and get confirmation of whether you're going to take the trade or not right so always zoom out and then slowly scope in on whether you're going to actually take the trade or not so as we can see we've had a big rally the past few days um, we had the fomc meeting um, i believe yeah it was yesterday we had this big spike spike up so obviously you know we're a little bit overbought um, obviously that doesn't really matter. We could keep going up forever, right? You know, who knows, right? You can't really predict what the market's gonna do. All you can do is, you know, look at those key levels, look at those key support ranges. So as you can see, we have one key supply zone, okay? So we're looking at supply zones since the market is up, okay? There's no demand zones because, you know, obviously the price is going up. So anyways, as we can see, you know, usually the way I draw my supply zones is always from the wick to the body. Okay, and you want to look for big moves. So as you can see, when we got a wick to the body, there was a big move down. So this tells me this is a supply zone. This, uh, basically this region right here. And what you'll notice here is, so you could have drew this before you saw any of this. What you'll notice here is what happened when we immediately hit this, you know, this body, right? Right where the, right where the candle closed. Um, we hit it a few days ago, or I believe a week ago. As you can see, we had a big move down. So as you can see from FOMC, you know, this basically just pushed, pushed it up dramatically. So typically with big news days like FOMC, for example, uh, you know, technicals don't matter as much, right? They're not always accurate. So this is why just because you're in a supply zone, you should never just take the trade. You have to look for confirmation. And this is the one of the mistakes I have made in the past, right? Is I'm like, oh, we're in a demand zone. We're in a supply zone. We're in a support. We're in a resistance. Let's take the trade. No, you have to make sure you get confirmation, right? So find the key levels is first and then the confirmation. So just keep it as simple as that. So now let's go over today, right? So today was these two candles right here we're on the four hour chart the market's still open at the time of recording this video i already placed some trades and like i said um, i ended up making just under 600 dollars today so anyways let me go ahead and zoom out here okay so we want to look at this next supply zone as you can see i had this uh let me move myself i had this what is it that 414 to 415 area kind of marked here so let me actually go and see when is the last time we were at those levels, okay? As you can see here, this is also supply zone from this mark. Um, again, we broke through that, that doesn't matter. And the last time we were at the level we're at now, or where we opened today, was um, back in August, okay? So we're at this range. So let me zoom into this range real quick. And now we can do the same thing. We can draw this little rectangle from where the wig to where the body of the candle is, okay? So this is basically, you know, that uh, 417.51 to that 416.13, okay? So remember those numbers? Now we're gonna go to where we opened today, 
Okay, so now I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna go to the one hour time frame. Okay, so what I did this morning is I drew this red box, this supply zone, based on that four hour time frame um, I just showed you earlier, right? This box right here. So anyways, let me go back here and let's go ahead and zoom into the charts. We're gonna go to the 15 minute time frame now. So anyways, as we can see in pre-market, we hit this level. This is why I drew the box right here. And then obviously, you know, the top of this box was that level where I just showed you where we hit back in August. That's kind of where the top of that wick was. Remember the wick to the body. So this is where I got the lower level and the top of the level was that top wick that we got like four months ago, the last time we we're at this price range. So before the market even opened, I kind of knew where the supply zone was. So now if we zoom into the five minute chart, again, we don't want to just take this trade because we're near the level. We want to get some confirmation that the trade is actually going to work out. So what was our first confirmation? Well, once we reached rejected this in the pre-market. So I trade options, so I can't trade in the pre-market. So as I was watching this at you know 9.30 Eastern time this morning, I saw we rejected this once. So that is a confirmation for me. So once we got this, we got this opening candle. Um, we kind of wicked down, we wicked up. So nothing really happened here. As you can see, we came up all the way to where we rejected in pre-market and we came down and then we closed right here at this 414.59. So immediately when we got this close, that for me was a confirmation. Okay, so this is when I took my first entry um, and you know, I kind of rode this down here. I took like half of my profits here. I was hoping we would get a reject all the way down to this pre-market, uh, kind of where we were trading. We never got there. So I just put a stop loss at a break even and then we wicked back up, right? And I got stopped out. Okay, so that was kind of my trade today. It was a little bit choppy market. Now, the next thing I was looking for, because I did take another trade after this, was, you know, are we gonna retest this level? What happens if we retest this level? Well, keep in mind, right? We already tested this level twice. So what that tells me is back three months ago where I showed you how we got this, you know, high level, a lot of institutions, they wanna sell and buy at a certain price, right? So a lot of these institutions, they're trading with tens of millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars. So they can't get all their orders filled at once. So a lot of times they'll leave limit orders basically where that price was. Now, a lot of these limit orders got filled because we sold off right here. So usually when we test the supply zone two, three times, that's where you know a lot of those limit orders got filled and it just wasn't a strong enough supply zone and that's why we're able to break out of it. So again, even though we tested this, Look at this strong candle. I wanted to wait for this candle to see what happened here. I want to wait for this candle to close. As you can see, the candle closed. We had a strong bullish candle. So that means there is no confirmation to take this trade again. So what do I do, right? I waited for the next level. The next level was kind of up here. This is another supply zone I saw from like four or five months ago. And as we can see, we're kind of just trading in this range all day. So basically what I did was again, I was looking for a confirmation. Um, so I actually entered right here just because we saw it start to level out. So whenever you start to see it level out and you get some confirmation, um, I believe I entered my first position here. And then once we came back up to this level right here, I was gonna stop out right above this wick, okay? So let me just draw a line so you can see that. My stop was right above this wick today. Again, my first entry was right around here once we got this close. And then I took another entry right around here um, so I got a little bit better entry and I ended up writing this down. So once we got back to this level that we were here earlier, uh, this is where I took half of my profit. So I took half of my position off. So I was trading with around $4,000 today. I took $2,000 off, made a few hundred bucks from that. Awesome. Now what I did with the rest of my position was again, I was hoping we get a flush back to this level. I know it'll eventually happen, but maybe not today, okay? So I basically, again, I put my stop at a break even. So basically what's gonna happen is either we're gonna get down to this level or I'm gonna get stopped out. And what do you know what happened? 
fully transparent here, I got stopped out once again. But luckily, since I trimmed half of my position, I was still able to make a profit on the two or three trades that I took today. So now we're kind of just floating around this level. We actually made a new high around 30 minutes ago. So now we're gonna see what happens next, right? We're still floating around this level. Uh, so for me, there's no confirmation. We're still making these higher highs. So that's kind of what I'm seeing as of right now. And that's ultimately how I made, you know, like I said, just under $600 today trading. All right, so let's go and recap this video. So again, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna look at those key supply and demand levels. So as you saw from the example of the trade I took today, right, we had that key supply level marked up. The price was super bullish over the past few days. So obviously we're looking for some kind of supply level. We're looking for a place where the price can start to even out and potentially have a reject where we can make profit, you know, trading put options. That's where you can start looking for multiple confirmations. So as we saw from the example today, my first confirmation from that supply zone that we already had marked was we hit it in the pre-market level and we immediately rejected. And then the market opened, we came up to it, we rejected it again. And then we got that close for that five minute candle. As we can see, it was a bearish candle. That gave me a confirmation to actually take the trade, write it down a little bit, and we made a little bit of money on that trade. Again, we got stopped out on our runners, which is fine, right? As long as you're following your plan, that's the most important part about trading. Because what will happen sometimes is that supply zone, right? If you take it like I did today, sometimes it'll go all the way down to that demand zone like I had marked. That's where you can start having those big days. And if you have those big days, you know, once per week, once every two weeks, and you keep your losers small, you have some, you know, decent winners here and there. That's where you can start to be a consistently profitable trader. Day trading spy options by focusing on quality over quantity following your plan, understanding your risk, understanding your reward, and all that good stuff that I share in this video. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. That's gonna be my cheat sheet for day trading spy options. And real quick, before you go, if you want a free copy of my day trading guide, this is gonna show you the five proven steps to properly day trade in the stock market. It's gonna give you some more in-depth information and you'll be able to go back and look at this guide at any time and download it to your phone, to your computer, whatever you use. So anyways, guys, if you want a free copy of this guide, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description below or just head over to this link right here. With that being said, if you guys are new, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And as always, trade smart, trade safe, and I will see you in my next video.